World in Action anticipated breathalyzer tests in Britain by two days. On Friday night, we took regulation breathalyzers supplied by the Home Office to the Green Dragon at Shenfield, a typical motorist pub in Essex. Statistics show that in Britain last year, drink played a part in 13,000 fatal or serious accidents. Breathalyzer tests have been introduced in an effort to reduce that number. I think it's fairly diabolical because uh, it doesn't take any account, for example, of the um, pedestrian who's had too much to drink. He could cause an accident, but he doesn't get tested. It's the driver who gets tested, and I think that's unfair. What do you think are your chances of getting away with it if you've had one over the eight? Well, it's not one over the eight. One over the green crystal, perhaps. I, I think very good. I think because I, I, I will drive no differently than I do now, and, I, and it's never attracted police attention up to now. But the questions being asked about the tests are, are they accurate? Have the police the men and the means to enforce the law? And will they be effective as a deterrent? <laughs> Time, my lords, ladies, and the gentlemen, please. Do you mind blowing into this bag before no, you drive? No, certainly not. One big blow, pull it right up. OK, let's have a look. How many drinks have you had tonight? Three pints. Three pints. Well, look, I'm afraid you're not sober anymore. No. Are you driving home tonight? Yes. Well, on Monday night, that'll be illegal. Well, I'm... Do you think you'll still drive home on Monday night? Well, no, not if, not, not if that's like it. Well, three pints isn't much, is it? It isn't very much, no. But do you think you're still, you know, perfectly capable of driving? Quite capable, yes. You don't sound very capable. Well, I quite know. Well, I, I should be. You I contend that I'm perfectly fit to drive a car. But you can't defy the law. It's the law of the land now. Ah, oh, that may be. It may be the law of the land. But I, I contend that I'm a fit and proper person to drive a motor car. Barbara Castle says that the only rule is to not drink at all. Now, you're saying that you can. Why should you be so special? Well, what does she know about it anyway? Well, do you know that you're capable of driving? I'm convinced that I'm capable of driving. I've done this for, done this for years now. I, I don't see what I am. As I say, for many, many years, I've drove with far more looking at me than I have now. And I've driven in Kenya, in Uganda, down in South Africa. And as I say, and I, I still feel that I am capable of driving this car home. So you're going to drive home tonight and you're not going to change your drinking habits at all? Certainly not. All right, let's have a look. You're drunk. You're not capable of driving. <laughs> now, what are you going to do about it? Well, quite honestly, I don't feel drunk. I mean, this is the, this is the point. But this is the law of the land. Yes, you I'm cannot really drink and this. drive anymore over this limit. I see. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> All right. But will you do this when the law becomes in force on Monday? Well, I wonder whether they'll sort of pick on the people like myself. But you're drunk. Oh, God. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Well, tell me what you think about this law. Well, I don't think it's... Um, well, no, basically, I pr it's probably a, 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 a quite a good law because, uh, uh, you know, anything to prevent accidents on the road, I can't agree with. But, um, it obviously, um, it, you know, it's, it's different with p different people. And some people get drunk on a, um, a small gin. Other people take um, 15 pints before they get drunk. But it's aimed at ordinary people like you and me, not alcoholics. <laughs> yes, th well, this is trouble. I mean, uh, what can I say? I'm drunk. Well, they fetch this law in... Uh... It, uh, what else can it be? It's fair. But uh, normally next week I wouldn't go to that extent. I've had four pints. So I should keep down to three pints. Fair enough. Do you think you really will keep to three pints? Yes, I can manage on that. I can enjoy my evening on three pints of beer. Drunken drivers should be off the road. But when they can convince me that passing that test such as you've done now, that you're drunk and not fit to drive a car, I think it's a lot of cock. But you could drive a coach and horses through the present act. Why do you reckon you can do that? Because you can go in and refuse to take the blood test. The breathalyzer is not the ultimate, the ultimate conviction. You can go through and take a blood... Uh, you can go into the station, they'll ask for a blood test. You refuse that, you take a urine test, they wait an hour, they have to throw the first sample away, you wait another hour. Then you refuse to take the urine sample and say you'll take the blood test. If you take the blood test, then your blood alcohol will have dropped by at least 30 or 40, whatever it happens to be, I forget, milligrams or something. You seem very well informed on the law, so you're going to carry on well, drinking I've, as before, are you? Yes, I've read the Act, and I, I've made sure in advance that I know exactly what I'm in for, anyway. 
What's your job? I'm a law student. I don't agree with the law, but I shall take notice of it because I don't want to lose my license for a year. Or, as, as the case might be, uh, whatever the penalty is. What do you think your chances of getting away with it are? Well, <laughs> I don't think they bring laws in that you can get away with anything today. I mean, 70 mile an hour limit, and I think, as far as I'm concerned, Mrs. Castle wants to drive people off the road. Get my keys, mate. 